I'm Rick Johansson, and this is the Iron Echo Design Channel. In today's video, we're gonna do an Inkscape tutorial, and it's based on a couple of recent comments I've had asking if we can do vehicle profile art. I think it's a great idea, it's fun, and it's easy. So you can do any car you want. If you wanna follow along in this step-by-step -step tutorial, I'm gonna do this number right here, and in the there'll be a link in the description below for this reference photo, because we're gonna do this Maserati. All right, so to begin, we need to get a basic idea. You, you can trace it if you want, but I wanna show you how to actually build this thing from scratch. So if you're new to Inkscape, I'll show you some of the tools along the way. The first one is guidelines. All right, so you see you have your ruler up here. If you grab anywhere on the ruler, it'll pull down a guideline. And this is useful in a lot of projects, but in this case, we're gonna use it to create the proportions of the vehicle. So car manufacturers, they have like these ratios for the first one's the roof line. The second, if you grab another one, is like where the door starts, window starts on the door. And then the third one is the chassis. So if it's just a visual cue. If you look at like, pick your favorite car and like year to year, it does follow the same ratio. They'll change different stylings and details. But if we're gonna be making our vector art, we're gonna base it on the, these ratios. So those are the first three. The next two guidelines are gonna be the wheels because this is the key to all the proportions. So the top line, there's a top of my wheel. If you can't see it, I'm just pulling it to the bottom of the wheel. And one more thing I always do when I have lots of guidelines starts to get messy is uh, you can change the colors on them. So just double click on one and you wanna go to, for my wheels, I'll make them black. If you can't see it, I'm just making this line black so I know that my wheels are the black guidelines. One of my absolute favorite things about design, of any type of design, is when like math coincides with like the beauty of it. So check this out. This, this, is Ma this Maserati, it works perfectly with, but I bet it works with any vehicle you pick if it's well designed. So check this out. So let's choose the circle and ellipsis tool. If you hold shift and control together, you can pull out a perfect circle. Just get something on the on the workspace there. So because we're going to I'm going to show you this ratio because we're going to base the whole art on it. All right, let's make it full black. This is your fill and stroke menu. If you don't have it, it's this paintbrush thing in the corner. I'm just making my circle and actually let's change the opacity so we can see through it here. Down here, there's opacity. Just bring it down somewhere so you can see through. I'm lining it up. If you hold shift and control again, it'll keep the proportion perfect. Okay, that's over the wheel. So there's our ratio of the wheel itself. Now I'm gonna put the opacity full, make it red just so we can see exactly what I'm talking about. Watch how the math comes in so perfectly here. If you have it selected, do control D, we'll duplicate it. And if you hold control, it'll lock in the horizontal and just bring it out. Control D, bring it out. Control D, look at that. It is, it's, it's perfect. So the wheel, the two wheel bases are exactly one, two, three, four, five apart. And watch this. Duplicate that one. I'll make this one so you can see through it. And you can do the same thing for like vertical guidelines. That's a half. And it gets even better. Duplicate that, bring it over here. And you're at a half in the front as well. It's just, it's just beautiful. And we're gonna use that beauty to work for us. So grab somewhere in no man's land, collect everything, control G will group it. Then if you hold control again, we can slide it out, give yourself some space, and we will use this to build our car. So let's add in the verticals. We know it's about half right there and half right there. <laughs> and this is gonna become a Maserati. Let's begin by choosing the actual wheels now. So this one will become black, full opacity, black, full opacity. And if you have the selector tool, we can say goodbye to the rest of them. From here, we're gonna use the Bezier pen tool to actually draw the rough, like the real rough, like the unmolded clay using the guidelines. We'll start at the front of the car and we're gonna rough out just the basic shape. So we know the roof line comes up here, comes up around here, it drops back down. I'm certain that this is the back of the car. So I'll click there. It comes down to around here and I've got to go down to the chassis, not the black wheel, the chassis come straight across. And at some point it meets back in the top. So <laughs> let's change the color there. <laughs> so it's ugly, but this is like we're molding the clay. Also, I'm gonna drop it down a step here. So go to selector tool. This is your hierarchy. Let's drop it down one step, two step to get behind the two wheels. And let's change this clunky Pinewood Derby box into a beautiful Italian masterpiece. 
This is where Inkscape really shines because it lets you have total control of the shapes that you want to create. So I'm going to click on this clunky thing we have here. And this one right here is called Edit Paths by Node. You'll see the different nodes are these little diamonds. Each node we can manipulate. So let's say this has more of a curve here. Pull out a little bit of a curve. This is going to be a nice gradual. Curve it up to where you like it. If you click on a diamond and this lets you change the curve itself. This one might be too far back. I've got this node down here that I think is too low. When I look at the reference, just grab it and move it. If you don't like how it affects the other parts, like I know this is supposed to be a perfect horizontal, you can double click and put it back. This is also the part where you can do some artistic license. So like if I look at the reference here, this looks like it curves out then down. And I kind of like how it just goes straight down. But if you wanted to go more realistic, you would want to adjust that. It's easy to see just glancing back and forth. The windshield's way off. So this node right here should come back. So in about a minute of the Bezier pen tool modifications, we went from a clunky piece of junk to a smooth piece of junk. Before moving on, I want to show you a detail how to fine tune some of your shape here. So you see how like on the hood here, there's this node. I need that change in curve, but it shouldn't be like a hard point. So there's two ways you can fix it. You can click on that particular node and just push delete but then that kind of gives it like too much of a curve. So with control Z, put it back, or you can click on it and then choose this thing right here. It looks like a, like a necklace, make selected node smooth. And that keeps the node there so I can change where the break goes. And then you can use the handles to put it where you want it. Somewhere right in here, good enough. Off camera, I tweaked a couple more points around the shape and now it's time for the paint job. So to do that, go to selector tool and we will use the linear gradient for this effect. The way it works is whatever your object is, that's going to be the base of the gradient. So click on gradient. It's going to go from the base color of gray, which is full opacity to full transparency. That's the most basic gradient, but we're going to modify this. So this pencil thing, if you click on that, you're going to get a bar. It's close to one of my guidelines here, but you see a square and then a circle. The square is your base color at full opacity. It's gonna to go to circle full transparency. That's the default. First thing we're gonna do is take your square, which is the base color, put it on the bottom, then take the circle and make it go towards the top. So we're gonna use the gradient not only for color, but to also add depth and contouring. And to do that, we'll add multiple stops. So we'll start with the bottom, modify that to maybe a lighter gray, I'll use the guideline for the first break. So to make a multiple stop, do a double click on your gradient bar. Let's go full white on that. See how it adds a little bit of contouring right off the bat. And then to make the effect better, we'll go directly above that, go back to gray. But that kind of makes it look like a, like a toy car. So above that, we'll add another one. Go back to white. There we go. So as a, it's, it's too dramatic. We'll, we'll tweak it at the end. And somewhere up here, I either want white or gray. Let's see what we like. And then we'll just modify it. You can move them around until you like the way it looks. Right about there. And there is a B in here. Quick point, if you're going to use this project outside of Inkscape, make sure each of your stops on the gradient, the opacity is full. Otherwise, you'll come into issues if you bring this into Affinity or Photoshop or something. All right, let's move on to the wheels and the rims. I'm going to keep this black circle here as a holding space because I don't want to lose my ratio. So instead, grab the circles tool, shift and control, bring out a new circle. We'll change the sizing later. And I need to go to full opacity black. So we're going to make a tire. So instead of doing linear gradient, we'll go to radial gradient, which is right here. Same thing as before. The base of the gradient will be whatever color your object is. So gradient, go to pencil, and let's modify it. So the center is already black, which is correct. But remember, it goes to full transparency. Change that to black. But the stops we're going to put in here is first towards the end. This is going to be the tire. So this is like low profile tire, but it still has some contour to it. So near the top, double click, it puts it on both of the gradient bars for you. And we'll change this one to, let's see what it looks like. Okay, <laughs> white walls. Go to somewhere in the gray. Then we'll add another one. We're gonna cover this with a rim, but here I'm trying to get, let's go back to black. Something like that, but maybe less dramatic. So let's lighten this one right about there. So there's our low profile tire. Let's do the rim now. So grab the circle tool, shift to control, makes a nice circle. This will actually be behind the rim. We'll use that in a second. Duplicate this, change the color to our whatever metallic looking rim we're doing. So for this, you can align it up better 
with the align distribute menu if you don't have it it sees like bar graph thing click on that so what happens is if you select the rims then shift select your tire over here if it's relative to last selected you can then center it horizontally and then center it vertically so it just puts it right in the, right where you want it i want to add a little ridge inside there so i'll duplicate it Let's put a stroke on this thing. So go to fill and stroke menu, stroke, activate the stroke. We'll make it a dark gray stroke weight, maybe 1.5, minimize and then blur. So down here, there's a blur. That's good. So I'm gonna put spokes here, but rather than cut this thing apart, I'll just have this be the black negative space. I'm gonna draw new spokes on top of it. So let's get the hierarchy right, go to the top bring it into place. And this is where the align and distribute menu comes in handy again. So it's selected, I'll do shift, select the gray align and distribute, center, vertical. All right, so now let's draw the spoke. So first I need the center part, shift and control, just eyeball it here, shift to get my other circle, center, vertical. Okay, we need some lug nuts. <laughs> lug nuts are gonna just be another circle. We'll make this darker. There's five lug nuts right here. Here's a trick you can do. You see how it has a hash mark in the center? Bring the hash mark down and you can use the space bar to stamp out lug nuts. The hash mark becomes a rotation point. So if you grab the handles, it's gonna rotate around that hash mark. And the space bar lets you stamp stuff out. So I'll go space bar, space bar, space bar, space bar. Lug nuts, and if they're out of order, just move them. <laughs> Not bad. This is why I love Inkscape, all these little tools like this. Let's do the spokes now. So I'll grab the Bezier pen tool, just gonna draw one spoke. It has to be the same color as the rim there. How's that? Eyedropper, do we want it that, I'm maybe thinner. If you don't like your object, go to edit paths by node. That's a little better. All right, so let's get that little hash mark again. So I select it, there's my hash mark. Now if you hold control, it locks in the vertical. I do wanna get this in the center and same thing. The hash marks there, that's the pivot point, and the handles let you spin. Looks like we're about right. So just stamp where you want it. So you can design your own rims. If you make a mistake, like that one doesn't look so good, just there's your hash mark, just move it. All right, wheels and rims are done. We need to group everything together before we put it into place. So grab in the middle of nowhere, around everything, control G, then we can resize right about there. Then control D will duplicate it. Again, if you hold control, it'll allow you to lock in the horizontal so you can slide it perfectly. Let's bring the other wheel. <laughs> All right, it's coming together. So I'm gonna make the windows now. And the last piece of the ratio we don't have on our grid here is where the door actually starts. So let's go back to our wheel measurement and check the reference photo to see where we put that last vertical guideline. All right, so one, two, three, four, five. There's our five wheels. We go back to the source. It's gonna come off, this is the door, right at the half mark. So somebody put some thought into how they made this Maserati come together. So we know that halfway on this inner wheel is gonna be where the door starts. Bring a guideline out, and then we can remove this tank tread. Okay, let's rough in some windows here. So I'll grab my Bezier pen tool, and I'm gonna follow the guideline. So I'll start, bring it up, come just at the door. I know the car has a little bit of an angle. Come in like that, and then there's a secondary window in the back. Now let's clean it up. I had to go to true voiceover on this part because I was trying to make the windows look right. And look, look at my face in the caption, not making it look easy. I'm just shaping the back window here with the handles until it looks about right. Let's zoom out, get some perspective. And I think we'll go with that. At this stage, we can make the windows tinted now. So I'm gonna go back to the fill and stroke menu. And this time I'll choose the radial gradient. We can edit this. Start with the inner part being more white and then the outer parts being black. Need to make the opacity come back up. And you can play with the effect. It's only changing the object of the window. It's not gonna mess up the body of the car. So that's too dramatic. So we'll click on the center part, make it more gray, red. We'll just go with that. Same thing for the back window. Just go to radial, 
And you can cheat and choose the same gradient you have. Just edit that one. I'm gonna add in the door lines now, the back quarter panel, and a couple more linear markings on the vehicle. So grab the Bezier pen tool and we'll draw down our door. <laughs> and it has a fill. So on the fill and stroke menu, just X out of the fill. We need the stroke to be there. So choose stroke for stroke weight. That weight looks about right. Maybe we'll pump it up. And this part becomes like artistic personal preference. If you want a hard line, keep it the way it is. I think I'm gonna change the stroke to something more subtle, a gray, and add a little blur. But we still have to clean it up. So go to Edit Paths by Node, and I'm gonna smooth some things out. There's our door. There's a seam at the bottom. So same thing, grab the Bezier Pen tool. Put some blur back in there. Maybe lower that one. Let's move to the back quarter panel. There's gonna be a tail light. I might do the tail light off camera just to speed things up, but the quarter panel comes about there. Blur that baby. All right, through the magic of editing, I did add some more details. First, the tail light, and this was just drawn with the Bezier pen tool, then reshaped. Then a headlight with a radial gradient, some <laughs> vent details, and I threw in a side view mirror to make this thing street legal. So there we have it. That is a vector art off of a source photo of this Maserati. You can use any vehicle you want. I hope this helped. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. Any suggestions for future videos, let me know. Thanks.